Now that we understand the underlying dynamics of the open circuit PN junction and the depletion region, we're ready to turn our attention to the effect of applying an external voltage to the PN junction. We're going to study it in terms of the simplest of PN junction devices, the diode. There are three different general states or conditions that diodes typically operate in. As we've seen, under open circuit conditions, the drift current, which is a function of the voltage, and the diffusion current, which is a function of the separation or the concentration of p-type carriers here and n-type carriers here. Under open circuit conditions, there's an equilibrium that exists where the drift current and the diffusion current are equal and opposite to each other. And so as we would expect, there is no net current flowing through the external circuit of a, um, when there's no voltage applied to the diode. When a reverse voltage uh, vo when a reverse bias voltage is applied to the junction, this external voltage reinforces the built-in junction voltage, expanding the width of the depletion region. You'll notice that the reverse bias has the same polarity as the junction voltage itself, and so they reinforce each other, increasing the overall barrier voltage across the PN junction. The increased or expanded barrier voltage then greatly reduces the diffusion current. So I sub D is reduced significantly, yet I sub S, the drift current of thermally generated minority carriers acting under the influence of the junction voltage remains roughly the same. So the drift current, which involves minority carriers, in this case, a minority carrier on the inside would be a hole a plus charge, thermally generated, and on the p-dope side that would be electrons, again thermally generated, those carriers respond to the voltage there, as is the case with the drift, and they will continue. But the diffusion current, because of the increased um, barrier voltage, the diffusion current is greatly reduced. The net current is then in this I sub S, which is also sometimes referred to as the saturation current, which is a very small current and again is due to the thermally generated minority carriers being drawn across the, um, the junction voltage. Now when a forward biased voltage is added, the external voltage opposes the built-in junction voltage and the depletion region actually shrinks in width. So it becomes narrower and the voltage barrier becomes smaller, the barrier to diffusion becomes smaller and diffusion, the diffusion currents become significant, increase significantly and become a significant portion of the current that's flowing through the diode. Once again, this I sub S, the drift current component, remains roughly the same, but the overall current then is dominated by the diffusion current, and it's this current then, that well, the, the, the net result of these two is the current that we see flowing through the external, through the external source or through the external circuit. So we understand then that in the reverse bias situation, the current, which is very small, is going to be the saturation current or the drift current. In the forward bias, the current becomes significant um, and is a result of diffusion from the doped um, comp compartments or the, the doped areas.